Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us here today for this conversation with Teokasen. I'm Larry Brown. I'm part of the Governing Council for the Holistic Health Community, and I just offer you greetings and welcome. And I want to just uh, take a minute to thank some of our supporting sponsors, the Gloria and Morty Wallace Foundation for making this possible, and our partners in this, Reconsider and Hutsey. And uh, if you don't know about us, we are a holistic health community and we've been offering free holistic health classes and workshops um, since the circumstances we're in. We've gone online and you could check out on our website what we offer. We have many remote healing sessions and counseling sessions that you could take advantage of and it's all listed on our website. And uh, I'm not going to say much more. I'm just going to hand this off now to Marcina and Stephen who will uh, take over with Diokasen. Thank you for joining us. Hi, I'm Marcina Hale from Reconsider, along here with Stephen Apcon and Teokas and Ghost Horse. And we want to welcome you and thank you, Larry, and the Holistic Health community for all the work that you do. And everything that we're doing is about community. And we want to say that this originally was going to be done in a larger group with a in-person, but because of COVID and what's happening in our world right now, we've had to cut it down to a very intimate conversation, but we invite you to still join us on Facebook and, and ask your questions and be a part of it. Mm -hmm. This is still a community conversation. And they're the conversations that during this period of time are so essential for us as individuals and as a community as we navigate through these difficult and challenging and also inspiring times. So I want to introduce Teokas and Ghost Horse and thank you for being here. Your voice has been so important. Uh, he, uh, Teokasen was in one of the first films that we did, which was Planetary. And we get a chance to hear, continue the conversation with you. So thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being here also. It's, uh, my name's Stephen Apcon, and uh, as Marcina mentioned, um, several years ago, uh, we had a film Planetary. And your voice was such an important voice in that film, and then a couple of films later to reconnect here in the Hudson Valley um, it was really meaningful to us. And in many ways, today began around a no agenda campfire. And, uh, and the campfire continues. And, uh, and we're really excited to have you here today. And I think one of the most inspiring things for us in the conversations we've had with you, Teokasen, over time has been around language. Mm. Uh, seeing language as a way into understanding a, a, a consciousness, uh, understanding a different sense of connection to life. And, uh, and as I was thinking about it today, as we were sitting here getting ready um, for this, the language, you know, you, you, you chose the word akantu for this, uh, for this program, and I'd love to get into that, but I'd also like to ask you the notion of how language is also a reflection of thinking, of thought process. Yeah. And of consciousness. Oh, that's a good one. Thank you, Stephen and Marcina and, and H. Hudson Hudson Health Community. Holistic, Holistic Health, Health Community. Community. Holistic Health. Yeah. Thank you. And and just reconsider, um, which is a great great way to, to think about things to reconsider, to respect, to look in, to look again, basically. Mm -hmm. um, so when the language started with me was when I was very young and I, I could not, uh, I could not uh, understand what concepts were. <clears throat> I had a hard time with, with having to deal with the beginning and an ending, a subject and object, um, nounifying, hierarchy, all of these. I couldn't understand that, you know. So there was a thing that I remember being a four-year-old listening to a drum of old Lakota men uh, on the reservation I grew up on and they were sitting around a drum and they were rolling their bull derm, called it bull derm in one hand and a drum and, and they were singing and what they were speaking the old Lakota, the very old and it was very, I couldn't understand what they were saying, I couldn't understand um, the words that we, they were using so that it as a four-year-old it would frustrate me. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and, and I was trying to think, now what does that mean? What does that mean? But the most amazing thing began to happen, I, the feeling of energy from what they were saying. 
And then I let that go and I started understanding it was the energy they were talking about. So when I got to a place where I understood um, Mm, as much as I could with Lakota, they, they said, well, it, it's, it's a language of, of energy. Mm -hmm. We say Lako, or we yukchante, which means um, to speak Lakota uh, thinking, Lakota thinking from the heart. Mm -hmm. So then I began, as I grew older, to start understanding um, English. And of course, I eventually understood what concepts were, um, the hierarchy that's based in the Latin of English and other languages that are based on dogma. Mm -hmm. And when I um, <clears throat> come to understand that, wow, how could I relate to different consciousnesses such as a tree or, a, or an animal or birds or fish or even other people, um, and I could not do it with a singular language that individualized myself and as if I was separate from everything. So when I begin to understand what does I mean I is a noun, so therefore not a being somewhat, because I was given a title, I. Then I researched more about what, what does that mean to us, a Lakota? I means basically, we can say uh, 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 that I, the meaning of I in Lakota is, is a verb, you are a verb. Mm -hmm. So we turn into energy, we are we a verb, we are in motion with everything. And from that point, uh, when I was older, in, in, in older, younger, in my 20s, I began to understand different variances and how to communicate um, uh, the, the feelings. And then so I'd go to the, to the older, older people, um, elders on Pine Ridge and Shine River, and it was very odd to, to go to them because th there was a certain protocol that you just came with respect, you know, so I felt that. And <clears throat> I was uh, given that the language begins with identifying or describing the energy. And then from, from that, you're identifying the motion of the energy. Mm -hmm. So there was really no nounifying of anything or thingifying or, or turning things into material object, objects or even subjugate, subjugate anything. So, so what became that that uh, the human being, you know, that the political terms of slave and, you know, uh, the, the master and all, it didn't fit. And because they were so divided between uh, the binary consciousness of, of right and wrong or worse or, or better or, you know, good or evil. And I couldn't understand, well, what's in between this? Mm -hmm. what, why aren't we working with what's in between it? Because it feels like we can work with what's in between rather than just take it for one or the other, right? Yeah. And then today that's still happening in, in a political and religious and a scientific mm -hmm. world is that we take one or the other, we have to prove it or wrong, we just can't accept the mystery in it because maybe we lost contact with that. Maybe, maybe mm -hmm. we don't have the language for that. And then just recently, I think it was 2016, I came into um, understanding a statement that uh, someone said, what's that? Language is the first weapon drawn in a conflict. Mm -hmm. And so I, I went with that and like, wow, that's true. And, and are we speaking the correct language, so to speak, without judgment, without uh, a mind of discrimination, a heart of discrimination, which the heart doesn't do anyway because the heart does not lie. So I'm thinking about how do I apply this to what I'm saying when, when I'm coming from the Lakota people, uh, understanding the way I felt, how the old ones, ones were, were, they were, when they were speaking on the reservation. And it was the energy. So are we conveying the energy or we, do we have the language that's stopping this energy? Right. Mm -hmm. That's not really completing its, its thought. You know, and with you two, I, I said, well, completing thoughts or some, something like uh, when I grew my uh, garden, I grew my garden, see? That's separating. I grew my garden, a possessive mm -hmm. right. and a singularity at the same time. But when I really looked into it, I was like, oh, this is not a complete thought. It has to be where the garden grew me, mm. because that's what food does. Mm. So we're acknowledging all the other consciousnesses that made intelligence, at least as we know it, 
that they they had to have some kind of conscious intelligence in order to convey that energy that the old people were talking about. Mm -hmm. So now we're, when we're, we're into struggling with the language, not necessarily a new language, because that new has connotations of, for me as Columbus, you know, I've been discovered and it's a new way. But this is also the tethering that we have to explain things to put it back in a box of what tethers us, mm -hmm. you see. And so along the way, all, all this time, I felt there's something really wrong, but why, isn't, why aren't people acknowledging it? Mm -hmm. You know, they've come to accept it. And, and like, they've accepted it that now they think it's right to be wrong. Mm -hmm. right. And, and for me, it's like, wait, there's, there's something not connected here or related here, because if you relate in the language where it's just all... Uh, in, La in Lakota, there's no word for our concept for relation, or excuse me, for domination. Mm -hmm. And when you don't have a word for domination, then everything must be in relationship. Mm -hmm. Then nothing is, is higher or better or worse or superior or inferior, that everything needs to be rela related to each other in order for that energy to, to mm -hmm. work mm -hmm. and complete thought, you mm -hmm. see. So when I think about okay, what words are they now discovering in this language of English that the old people already spoke? Is that the language was kept down in a way because it had consciousness and that it threatened the subjectivity and the, the domination, um, the concepts that needed to control people's minds, um, their energy needed to control um, uh, the the act of freedom, so to speak, and it gave you all freedom in America, gave freedom, said this is your free, you're free to vote, you're free to whatever, but underneath it all, it didn't really allow your spirit to, to uh, re remain related. So it cut that off and gave you boxes of religion and dogma, um, boxes of religion, if I can say it, tied to science, and boxes of religion and science tied to government. So now we're all tethered to that dogma, to that, um, oh, this is the only way we can actually get things done if we keep this restricted thinking going, um, because that's, you know, after all, it's the best that we can do. Well, and I think it's interesting because, we, you know, we call it narrative. Yeah. You know, people are caught in these narratives. And the question is, you know, that's been asked before is, are we choosing it? <laughs> or is this the reality that we are born into and we don't know that there's a choice? And so I think the conversation with you is so important because you offer another choice of the way of being able to look and examine uh, the <clears throat> narratives and what we're really doing and from another perspective. Yeah, and, and I think that when, when we were speaking, I'm always trying to relate that, the fact that, you know, there, there is... In the original languages of, of many indigenous peoples, there is no uh, language for uh, gender hierarchy. Right. You know, which is which is something that I guess the society has been trying to work on, but yet is it more seen as that the fact that we're still using a patriarchal language and that the mm -hmm. females are also speaking a patriarchal language, promoting the patriarchy, how we treat the earth, mm -hmm. how we treat each other, yeah. you know. So maybe it's that that we need to not just develop a new language, but see our way out of it, that maybe there's something really wrong here, but we're afraid to admit it. And if we don't admit it, then what happens? That we continue to wear, to do the same repetition we've been doing in the United States since 1492. Um, so to bring forward the bigger consciousness before 1492, I think it's is what many Native peoples are trying to say to, to the rest that it came here after, is that there is another way to think, and that's usually making decisions through the earth rather than through, through the bank, mm -hmm. you know, and the assimilation um, that, that it, to take one away from their original roots is such an, an American thing to do, and that's why we, we, in America, we don't go back to where our roots are, we're, we're, we're just, um, displaying the, the symptoms of being an right. American. So what I'm saying is that the progressive, um, the, the, the left, even the right, is like we're, we're pushing a, a conscience of, of whether we're doing the right or wrong thing, but we're forgetting about the consciousness of the earth and who are these 
consciousness carriers, they're all deep inside of us, but mainly they've been um, sequestered, they've been marginalized as people of, of color, but I say people of culture, and that means right. more or less mm -hmm. the people of culture uh, of this continent in, in South America, Western Hemisphere, are native peoples, indigenous peoples. Mm -hmm. And that consciousness has is, is always been at the ready, yeah. you know? And I think that if, if we can have a language in, the, in, I don't say resources, but if people were able to understand that consciousness even more, not just having to, to learn the language, but effectively learning how to, to uh, look at something different that has, there's, there's something outside of the box that we're missing. Yeah. I think there's so many things that you talk about that are, it can be, there's, they're so subtle, but they're so impactful. Like when you talked about the notion of, of Lakota language not having nouns, right? So there's, there's movement, there's flow, there's energy, as you said, right? And it's not static. And dogma, it seems to me, has that more of that noun consciousness. Yeah. Right is is more fixed is more concrete. Yeah, I mean, we we, we think about dogma, how static that could be, and, and right. you know, and it's that it, it's not in rhythm with nature. It's right. not a living language. It's something that keeps history and data, information and knowledge without applying wisdom because it's forgotten its relationship with the earth, which is a wise being. Mm. So I think we do feel that all inside. You know mm -hmm. that indigeneity in us, but we haven't the language to evolve that. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm sort of curious because obviously we're coming up on Thanksgiving and mm -hmm. the whole narrative around that, and I'm thinking about what actually motivated the the people that came over here to this country, mm -hmm. and there's a couple different things. One of them was freedom which was interesting because they come over here for freedom and yet what they do is take away freedom. Right. And the other one is what you talk about where the America's name came from, if you would share like yeah. about that. Well, this is in, been working with a friend, Steve Newcomb since 1992 about language and you know, how he sees things through the Latin based languages and the etymology of what they really mean. And one day we were talking and and like, what does America mean? You know, ame, ame, something like the love of. Mm -hmm. And rica is a feminine form of, of riches. So we're looking at, oh, the love of riches, mm -hmm. right? And then what do you do when you, once you love the riches, basically you become an American, one who loves the riches. And so what has it turned into physically is the greed, the, 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 what we call the washichu, taking too much, you don't need all of this, right? Then, then what, what happens to, to a being, an energy um, that runs out of something to eat? It begins to eat itself, mm -hmm. morally, physically, spiritually, mm -hmm. you know, all these things. And it, because it's still using the same, uh, errat uh, how do you call it, um, uh, extraction thought mm -hmm. process that you go over there to bring it back so that we could survive in our box mm -hmm. rather than giving up the box and understanding the relationship mm -hmm. that the box is also needed mm -hmm. the rational thinking is also needed but that we've made it such a uh, the thing that lauds over everything and, and we, we use it in a dogmatic fashion that that's the way we do it that's reality but I do know that that that's not reality yeah. the relationship is the reality and what have we what have we done? Even as a country of America, what, what reality is there when, when they forgot how to relate to the earth? Right. You know, there's environmental, <laughs> um, you know, I guess the disposition of would be that environment or the environmental movement has redefined what is a natural rhythm and, and marginalized it and dogmatized it such that we need to control even the earth. Becomes, it comes out in conspiracy theory that we're going to make weather and you know, change the weather and change the earth, but it's not really, I think we're fooling ourselves because we, we are, we're basing everything on science and how much information we can rely on in order for us to control whoever wants to control this because this information is always changing because the earth controls science. Science will never be the same because earth is in control of science. That's what I mean. Well, you know, I think so. what's interesting is what you said before is, you know, we lost the connection to the mystery itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, the fundamental 
longing is for that reconnection. And, you know, when I look at our culture right now and what's happened here in, the, in so much pain and trauma that was created in this country in order to do, again, to escape their own traumas, whatever the history that each person brought over, mm -hmm. you know, how do we bridge now these traumatic issues that have happened with the kind of knowledge that can heal us in that sense from yeah <clears throat> when i think about that um how do you say it? the quick fix uh, the, the the instant gratification mm -hmm. to drive up my mentality that you know drive it get it will go quick and because this is the way we've always done it well i think that has seen its its end and it's losing energy really quick and we know that there's another way that's already present you know, and who are we to acknowledge or not acknowledge that? Is that because we are trying to hang on to something that's really not belonging to, to anybody in the relationship that what we do is we belong to what is related, mm -hmm. you see? And so when I think about the quick fix um, ideas that are always, you know, vote for the next whoever and then vote for the next and, and we'll keep cooking along, the meantime, resources are running out. Right. You see, so where where is the, the sameness of that? And, and, and it's just the same as the people. So right now, the indigenous consciousness in the Western Hemisphere and all over the world is, is that's what we need to, 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 I don't know how do you say it, to uh, nourish, to nurture, um, to, to understand that maybe it's these peoples of all of us, these indigenous folks that are still in rhythm with nature, and I think we're we're out of step, as as this country is, because it, if it was in step, then the agenda, if that's what it is, would be Earth agenda first and foremost, because that would keep all life in, intact, mm -hmm. you know, and rather than just us planning to to launch someplace else to another another planet, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So an Earth thinking or an Earth consciousness, right, or uh, brings us to the question of a kantu. Yeah, the acknowledgement of energy from time and space that before thought, before we could even think as humans, right? Um, the the, the space, spatial, I guess you could say time on the space, um, a voice that was spoken, to put it in language, a voice that was spoken about the, the energy and that was always acknowledged, mm. right? But we haven't acknowledged that because we've kind of piecemealed ourselves away and said, that's God. And we've nounified God. Yeah. So therefore it's a dog. Separation. Yeah, we separated ourselves and yeah. did what we did to put in. So I think uh, from quoting my, my uncle, he said there were 220,000 organized religions uh, that all had dogma in the world mm -hmm. and only one spirituality. Right? Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and that one spirituality would be what people will say, we're all one um, without ever knowing how to be related. Because mm. right. it's the tie-in is to be related, learning how to be related, which makes us all one, our organisms as we are in that sense, right? So, and I think, again, going back to the, the, the fix, quick fix thing is, I have to say this disclaimer, I'm not a shaman or I'm not a chief, not a spiritual guru, nor do I tend to be any kind of healer. Mm -hmm. Just be me, right? Mm -hmm. And that, that's, that's the, the forte in, human, in humans who are just themselves rather than thinking that they are themselves, that they know without doubt that this is what you were here for. The purpose was to support life to, if anything, the word would be pray, to understand energy mm -hmm. and what, what a spiritual technologies have we had and that we've forgotten that allows us to understand the energy that was given in everything, all life, mm -hmm. right? So a kantu is part of that earth, earth mind, earth consciousness, earth, earth man, earth woman, mm -hmm. earth being. Mm -hmm. right. And once we, we put earth in front of us, then everything is that. Mm -hmm. And rather than the, the Anthropocene that we're going through now, and because of our anthropocentric thinking that humans are the most intelligent, and I know they aren't. We're building bombs. So what, what intelligence is that? We, we, may, we read books. What is that? Why don't the other life forms do this? Right. Why, do, 
why don't they read books? Maybe they're just in a kantu. Maybe they're already mm-hmm. here and they don't need to have a conscience, mm-hmm. but they do have consciousness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I really, yeah. That's beautiful. And, and, you know, it does bring me back to like your, when you were just talking about being a four year old and having these kinds of thoughts and questioning. And so often we look at our young as being needed to be taught. Mm-hmm. This constant, um, and it's interesting right now in COVID because a lot of the kids are not in the typical school setting and even the way that they're being educated is changing rapidly and I think the parents are looking at education a different way, teachers are looking in a different way. But to actually understand that the four-year-old, the three-year-old, the five-year-old that you are sitting at is looking and learning and wondering like you, you were wondering. Yeah, and that's the, um, the, the, we call them wakaheja, right? The, the ones that are born from the, the, the purity, right? The wa, the purity, uh, the energy, the pure energy. Um, to consciously apply mystery to everything, we're all born with that. Mm-hmm. And we're in wonder, that energy of like, intelligence is so connected and then we are programmed away from mm-hmm. dog by dogma and so now we're we're doing the bidding of a god that's removed we're doing the bidding of a science and and you know because we have to prove ourselves in all of those we have to prove ourselves to god we have to prove ourselves to science we have to prove ourselves to what am i forgetting um government mm-hmm. we have to prove ourselves and that's like that's not a way to live mm-hmm. that's not how i feel it's like does a tree have to prove itself? Mm. You know, and that's that's what we get caught up into. That this is the way we do things because we we are so restricted in this way that the four year old is like, you know, like we see them just being themselves. How come we can't? It doesn't mean that we have to be go, go nuts and go out and take drugs and all the things that we're told to do because a generation say this is how you are free. It's it's alleviating yourselves of the tethering of thinking that you have to to act in a certain freedom that they've given to you when you were granted and given that when you were first born anyway, mm-hmm. right? And so you have a 96-year-old who's preparing to go out into another dimension, right? But they don't want to go to heaven, they don't want to go to hell, you see? Or, you know, that, that whole mm-hmm. letting go process that even the, the, the babies coming into this world have already let go but what, what have we taken away from them that they are always trying to, trying to be right again? Because mm. you feel wrong, like you're doing something wrong, saying something wrong. You know, so this, this, this thinking from the heart, that the whole idea of understanding from the heart is not just a poetry, because I can hear people saying, taking this, what we're talking about, and trying to put it back into something that they know, their concepts. Right. It's blowing the concepts right. away. Right. Just, right. just take it out of the concepts. You're wrong. You're right. Good, evil. You know. Let's let's take it away, mm-hmm. and and deal with what we have here. That yes, we feel that there's something that needs to happen, mm-hmm. but we're still using the same language that's preventing us from what needs to happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's a wonderful book that I read years ago uh, by Leonard Schlein, Alphabet and the versus the Goddess, and sort of that notion of language coming in and it being. Uh, and he's talking specifically about language coming from Egypt and, and Roman and Greek and all that, and uh, and that being a place of separation, mm-hmm. you know, that being a place of where the dogma comes in and where we're told of the consciousness and the constructs that we're supposed to operate in. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting because when you were talking about heart thinking, and then when you went and you were just talking about uh, thinking about the way we talk about government and about culture and all that stuff, you 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 were, you were here. You went this thinking. Mm-hmm. And I'm wondering, like, is it is it about the integration of both of those things? Is it the rationality that's that's taken us out of the or the the way that we privilege uh, rationality in in our culture? I think so. I mean, that that's what I mean. I have to prove myself that I'm intelligent in mm-hmm. this society, right? I don't have to prove that to a tree. Yeah. So you know, I can't take my plans to anything and my book to that tree because the tree won't. Like, you know, what are you doing? <laughs> like, like, 
it, it has a consciousness already. Maybe yeah. that's why we have books and things, so that we're trying to look for consciousness that we lost. Yeah. So why don't Native people have alphabets? Why don't we, we have a concept of, of domination? Because maybe we don't need that anymore, right. you know. Because A to Z is is a restriction. Mm -hmm. It has symbols, yes, that have meaning, and we can look into it. But when you come to letting go of all of those control measures, restrictive thinking uh, methods, is that there is a quantum physics out there that's available. Not so much that a given reward system, but but it, it's always giving generously. And so why aren't we that way? How come we, we are kind of guarding intellectual property? We're guarding my, my you know, whatever. It's, it's always about guarding property that never belongs to any place. What, what an inane, insane, inane idea is to think that you can own anything, mm -hmm. right? Let go. Yeah. So, I, and I, th I think that's an interesting thing for me because we, we talk a lot about oppression. And the word oppression, and this is it's a very delicate topic, in, in especially today, but we look at the oppressed as being the indigenous or the um, you know, African Americans or the Latinos and so forth. But when you look at oppression, who's the most oppressed, mm -hmm. it would be the oppressor. Yeah, yeah. Because who would you rather be in if you if you come to this world and you could be anybody you'd want to be would mm -hmm. you want to be the oppressor or would you want to be you know in yeah, yeah. all those control mechanisms to control you know it, it kind of like your your dog owns you rather than you owning your dog type of thing but that oppression the measures so we have to look at this language look at the etymology of do we really need to, to think this way? Because obviously we don't feel this way. You know, there's something wrong, but how come we don't have the right language to understand that there's something wrong, right? So we look for rationalities and in, in intellectual denials. Mm -hmm. So the more we're educated, <laughs> the more we're educated, uh, we're seduced out of our, um, you know, we're drawn out or we're, we're led away from spirit. Right, so and, and that education is not all cut out to be what it is. I think I, I kind of giggle because um, Mark Twain or Robert Clemens was his mm -hmm. name. He said uh, I, Samuel I was, Clemens. Yeah, Samuel Clemens. Samuel Clemens. Yeah. He said that uh, I was educated once and it took me years to get over it. Right? <laughs> so I think about that. Are, are we need, we're needing the same thing? Taking us years to get over it, mm. and, and and Native people say decolonize and colonize, but that's a binary too. Mm -hmm. In the old way, there was no such thing as to colonize or decolonize, it's just right. a formula that's thrown upon us because we're struggling within it to, to find recognition within the classic system that based, based on taking the resources away and deflects us from actually being who we are as native people. So indigenous peoples, again, indi in, I can say indigent and work on that in Latin, the etymology of in, indigent is indigenous peoples, the, the people, the race, poor people away from us, oh, oh, somewhere mm. else. So we can use that. Um, I remember using it in, in 1990, 91, and people thought indigenous was a plant, you know, because mm. it's not in our vernacular, but now yeah. it is, because now we're all learning and yearning, longing for who are we, right. you know? Who are we? So we send rockets and everything out there. Well, we came from here on this and then, we dig in the earth to try to figure out where do we come from. But I don't think it's that so much for indigenous people. You, mm. you don't find that. Because that's the first thing you do is when we introduce each other is that we know, we ask the family lineage, we know. And then you're secondary. You're secondary because you're, you're seeing how much generosity you can have with your being given to other people. Mm. Not just, because you come from the source. You're not yeah. ever a resource. You're never a resource. So I think that that's a word that we can just drop. But source is what it's all about. And are we taking care of that source? Because that source generously has been taking care of us forever. Mm -hmm. You know. So yeah. that's one of our, our the main ideas is to appreciate. And Uncle said that. Um, um, yeah, the two things that we can ask for, and as as I understood, is that the two things that we can ask for, not pray. But to ask for is appreciation and the intelligence to know appreciation. Mm. 
And that's the, the like the formula, if I could say it that way. Wow, I love that. So understanding, yeah, understanding that we, we cannot remove ourselves and figure out how to go to another planet or whatever, because mm -hmm. we need to deal with this consciousness here. Yeah. COVID, COVID's here, mm -hmm. right? So what has COVID done to us? It brought us to a different kind of consciousness, a different mm -hmm. way of thinking, being, and we're still tethered about treating it the same old way mm -hmm. with, with the vaccines and mm -hmm. whatever we, we have from that science. But the way I understand it is that let's, let's really sit down and, and consult with, with Corona mm. virus. Let's consult with it as a being, respect it, and maybe even honor it because it, it came with all these intelligences, mm. Mm. all these mm. intelligences. But what are we doing? We're going back to the... Um, I don't know if it's called post facto of Western civilization to solve a problem that it can't even take care of, of the technical damage it's done in Fukushima. Right. You see? So where is the reasoning? People forget because history, we want the current latest and greatest news that can give us a thrill. So yes, the, the top 40 in music, the top 40 singers, what we watch on TV, or we're in the addiction of this, and people have heard this before. We, we yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying anything new, but maybe it's, it's, a, it's about that we can go back to the original in all of us, that the earth doesn't lie. Mm. And where are these languages that come from the earth? These languages don't lie because we're about the earth, the relationship with the earth. So if we, we are, we're, we're not speaking the truth with the earth, then what are we doing? Mm. In the sense of being of the earth. Yeah. We're, we're theorizing. Right. We're theorizing everything. We're, we're imagining and we're told that's good, right? But there's no consciousness of, of relativity with the earth because that's, that's real in a sense. You feel mm -hmm. the air. You know the, the, the trees. You, you know something here. And why isn't it, why are we looking out there rather than understanding that we are constantly being uploaded from, from Mother Earth? Right. The intelligence, the, the trees, the water, like incredible. Why aren't we taking care of that? I think that, you know, with places like Standing Rock and even before that when I was a kid and Wounded Knee and, and other places around the world that I've been to that, that are talking about the consciousness of the earth, that the reason why these things happen is because we hurt, we forgot our message from the earth, so we're hurting, we want to hear that again. So guess what? Earth is speaking loudly once again, even through COVID. Mm -hmm. You know, and go back to Standing Rock, it was actually four years ago uh, that we were in this Standing week. Rock. This week. Yeah. And it was interesting, because as we were pulling up, while we were hearing on, on the radio station about how dangerous the protesters were, and to be careful, and all of this information was given to us, and we went, in, we went into the um, camp yeah. with friends, and there was so much peace there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was the antithesis of what they were saying on the radio. Yeah. And the way that the protesters were working and the way that we were taught then was the first we had to teach to respect. We were there to, to be in service to yeah. the yeah. indigenous community. And it was beautiful. They, mm -hmm. they tell us, this is what you can do, this is what you can't do. And they taught us respect right away, which was beautiful. And even uh, the Veterans um, for Peace were there, who was the organization we came in with. And to watch them look at the military that was up on the hill. Mm. And then they were speaking to the military. But you could see the power of media yeah. in shifting the view and changing the reality. And we, as you know, Steve's book comes from the age of the image, but we're in an age of the image where so many people are on this media. And the question you know, about being able to shift into this kind of mindset is that how can we shift into that mindset with the current media or, or what do you, what you're thinking about? That? <clears throat> many people call it alternative. And that to me is like sort of a, a jab because I'm not alternative, I'm native. Mm -hmm. The way we think about things is alternative. And that's supposed to be a good thing, because for us in 1492, the papal bulls thing began to be alter, altered, altering the native. Mm. And you know, to to come here in a in a place that's that so beautiful, and to just reap it, right? So there must be some kind of um, illness happening spiritually among people who think that this way needs to continue. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but what was one does in nature is that she also provides a medicine that she um, has always provided is the fact that um, she takes out domination. She, re she relieves, alleviates herself of domination. She does it in nature with too many deer in one place, too many squirrels or too many humans maybe. Mm -hmm. But with, with us, it's because of domination. You know, we, we, it's like an infection, like, like virus really. To think dominant that someone knows more than the other person and because they control the money or the access to it or the land. So these are the things that, that you know, I can talk about need healing, but Earth herself needs to be, um, the, the languages need to be translated from, again, the Earth is, doesn't lie. Mm -hmm. and, and that kind of, we need to look at all, all of the, I'd say, wrongs, or even the rights, because for some, some of us, even what's right in this society may be wrong for another people, mm. right? Yeah. Um, so, you know, even the languages of possession, like, wow, mm -hmm. that, I think we don't, we don't understand that. We have a mm -hmm. given reward system. I'm going to share my piece of pie with you, right? And everybody's trying to take a piece of the American pie, but they forget who owns the bakery. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and maybe that's the secret. Here. Yeah, the, the land back movement that we have as native people is like that's part of it. To understand that we can actually the the land will show you how to heal yourself. The land yeah. shows you how to, to heal um, itself, right? Actually, and we just let it go. When when March happened here, it's like no planes in the sky, mm -hmm. no cars. Mm -hmm. You know, look what she did for right. the summer. Yeah. So this is what I'm saying. We have to let go, of thinking that we can control just about. Well, I almost cussed there, but um, we can we can't control. We have to let go, and it's not a passiveness to let go. It's it meaning that you are stating that we know who we are by letting go, because we do not own it ultimately. Yeah, mm. you know, and it's that energy again. How do we? What happens to when we misdirect that energy? We're not using it properly. Um, so, you know, then we can go back to, well, what's, what's happening to my people when they're catching all the COVID and back home and we're doing what we can to, to live off a system that has taken everything away from us and we have Thanksgiving upon us and we're supposed to be feeling good because it's all about sharing, but yet we're still denying the fact that there's, there's bones underneath, you know, the Thanksgiving table, basically, that mm -hmm. are Native people that we haven't really grieved about. We haven't mm -hmm. learned how to grieve in this society. Um, and I think that's what is, is another key to it, because we can, we can do our best, but we, we, we haven't done what's required yet. And that, I think that's what's coming, the, the baseness of, of, being, of being, doing what we have to do, right? The, the requirement that we have to do is like, look, it's easy, the earth, the earth doesn't lie. Maybe that's the language, the new language we could uh, evolve mm. from, and so we, we're speaking with the earth, but that she's our decisions that we make through. We make our decisions through her first, rather than through the control mm. that we're taught through the banks, right? Yeah. The decisions. So. It's, you know, when you talk about the earth doesn't lie, and you also said the heart doesn't lie. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can feel the connection there. Yeah. And Marcin always talks about how in our society, you know, we've, we've created this place where our kids, they understand the disconnection, right? They understand innately that the culture that they're being asked to be a part of, that they're growing up in, um, he doesn't speak to their soul. And, and we have more and more of our kids are struggling. Hmm. And what's interesting, as you always point out, is that the more the struggling that happens, when they get to the point where you don't know how to support them as parents, you know, oftentimes they'll go out into the wilderness, mm. and uh, and yeah, the, the wilderness programs. And the wilderness well. programs essentially are: you're on the ground, you're on the earth, you're not in tents, you're not uh, in in houses. Mm. You know, you're in the wilderness for sixty, eighty, ninety days, and that's the therapy, yeah. right? That's the return. It's so, so much so, and in, in thinking that deeper into that thought is how much you say we, we all go out into nature to have a reprieve, even from ourselves. <laughs> um, but it's really go to, to, find the me, to, to find the medicine. Yeah. 
and the languages that, that I've studied and heard of traveling is that a lot of indigenous still speak that, the microtonal languages. In other words, I'm, I'm saying that um, they know the languages that the plants speak. Mm. We know that certain languages have uh, vibrations. Mm -hmm. uh, certain plants, certain everything has vibration to it and they make certain sounds. Mm -hmm. Now these, I use the example that the Western science with all their knowledge and know-how and scientific uh, methods only understand 10,000 of the 100,000 plants in the Amazon mm -hmm. when the native people understand 100,000 without the science. Wow. It's because their languages are still speaking what, what we've been always talking about. This is how you treat the earth. This is how you respect the earth because it respects you, it cares for you. So mm -hmm. why aren't we returning the favor basically? Um, so it's the microtonals, the microtone language and everything changes once we are outside because then you have even the mushrooms, <laughs> the plants and the trees hearing not so much with our ears but our heart picks it up, yeah. all the, the vibration that's happening. But we're away from nature. What happens is the harshness of only dealing with other human beings and that only we matter. So the subject matter is that only humans count in the end mm -hmm. and in the beginning. So we lost story with the earth. Mm -hmm. You know, we have fairy tales about the earth, but there's no living with the earth yet. So I always say that the, uh, again, uh, off my ancestors and with my ancestors, is that where's the peace with earth? Because that would, would solve all the problems that we're having by having peace on earth, which by the way, in the next month or two, we're gonna hear peace on earth in the last thousands of years, we never had peace on earth. Mm -hmm. But the indigenous folks, we've always had peace with earth. And that's mm -hmm. part of the truth of the earth is that that doesn't lie. Peace comes from the earth. Mm -hmm. And if we don't understand that, then I guess we'll continue to, to have peace on earth and extricate everything to try to please ourselves temporarily. Yeah. We'll have peace on earth and, uh, and we'll own a piece of the earth. That sounds good. Peace of the earth. Yeah, we own. own, own That's the consciousness, right? That's yeah, the, yeah. Yeah. So is it? Is it, it? You find? Do you find conscience outside? Do you find uh, that a tree or a bird or do they have conscience? You know, mm. they they're, they only have consciousness. Right. Mm. And it's only it seems to me the human being that that has this trouble with conscience, whether or not we're saying the right thing, doing the right thing. Because if we had consciousness, we knew, we know that we would be either doing the right thing or knowing no. or doing the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I want to just say to the community out there with Facebook, um, please send in your questions. We're, we're very excited to be able to communicate with you and to continue the conversation um, included you know, with all that. Speaking of that, we have a question from, from Hillary, uh, who's online. Also, if you just add, if you could say where you're coming from, so where you're... Yeah, that would be wonderful. That would be great. Yeah. I don't know where Hillary's um, writing in from, but she, she wanted to know whether you could speak more about the notion of I as a verb. Yeah. <clears throat> I is a noun, and it seems to precede everything um, when we speak in this language. I say this, and I say that, and I do this, and I think that. It's always I. So I is, is you're stating it and you're separating yourself. It's funny because I feel, I feel like when I'm speaking English, I, I, I'm always separating myself. So if you, you understand I in, in the sense that you are a, a breathing, living energy with all things, then that is eventually removed from, from your language, from, mm -hmm. from your lexicon. So in the older languages, that I know of indigenous languages there, there's not even a word for I, or me, or my, or mine, or ours. So now think about that. Can we speak in that language without having to say I in reference to everything? Because is that how far we are away from relationships? Mm -hmm. Because we need to separate ourselves by mm -hmm. saying I, me, my, mine, or ours. Can you give us an example, Teokasin, of how that might work in Lakota? Well, there's, there's one thing that I do with people, environmentalists, young ones, that I tell them how to, I say, well, write 500 words about yourself. And without ever 
meeting me or anything. I just the, their first instruction I give is, I'll write 500 words about yourself. Introduce yourself to me. And so they write, they spend maybe up to an hour sometimes writing about themselves. And they, they, it's hard to put about themselves in 500 words. So they finally come around to it. And then I say, well, now you can give it to your partner. And every other partner, would you underline I, me, or circle I, me, my, mine, and ours? Any mm. possessiveness of that too. And so they, 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 they circle and they find out that, wow, there's a lot of I's in it. There's a lot of me's or my's or mine or ours. And now take that out of, take those possessives and those singularities away and just say what it is that you related to. So it becomes an alive language. So when I say, well, um, now we, we are understanding life differently, that it does not center around the I, it's not centering around me or mine, because you don't belong to me. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't belong to me. It's, it's that whole thing that, wow, but you, you are me. So how am I treating my, uh, my body in that soul, basically? Yeah. How is, is my body living in this soul, rather than the opposite? My soul is only in my body, and I'm separate mm -hmm. from everything. Mm -hmm. So that would be an example of mm -hmm. the I, me, my, mine, and ours. Yeah. It's kind of thought of as a respect that you say I, instead of, because I'm speaking for me, not for everybody else. So I will say I, the, the, as a way of like respecting that you're separate from me and you might think or feel differently mm. than I do. I know that's one of the things. But it that, reinforces that sense of separateness. Right. Way, yeah. I mean, I can't even think of how to say it in another way. Like, I'm sort of curious about, yeah. it, does the language even allow that? Does our language right now without... Yeah, Being confused. If, if, I mean, it, it's a new agey thing and the latest uh, the we, <laughs> we instead of me type of thing. That's kind of that. That's fun, tongue in the cheek kind of. Um, but if we, we go back to the original statement that, I, that I'm thinking here is, um, I think, therefore I am. Yeah. Yeah. So in the Black Hills, we had a 2015, we had a uh, 2000, I think it was a re 2015 retreat where 400 other people, including Lakota elders, showed up and, and it just came out that we no longer say, I think, therefore I am. It's now that we thank, therefore we are. Mm. Mm. So there is a different way wow. to understand that. You say that again, just to make we, sure. We thank, therefore we are. Yeah. It's, it's including all, not just the human beings. Yeah. So, so the, the whole phrase of... Uh, Midakoe Oyasi yeah. is basically understanding E equals MC squared and beyond. See, now that gets into quantum physics of these indigenous languages. That's why they banned our languages back in the 1800s. And many native people don't understand that they're speaking a subjective way to, to their language instead of going back to the original energy of that language. Of quantum physics, you know, very, and I don't get new too new agey about it because I'm not, I can't give secrets away in Lakota, I can't give them away in English. So it's basically that, you know, there is another way to think, there is another way to feel, but we've lost the, the, the language of feel and put it into an emotive language, an angry language, mm -hmm. something that would be controlled by business, by developing different psychologies. <laughs> um, just on and on and on, so that you can earn a living this way, right? Yeah. Um, and and yet the the whole idea or notion of being primitive is that we don't have the sophistication. But yet, one hundred, two hundred thousand years ago, the native people were sitting, looking, and contemplating the stars. Right. You see. So where is that intelligence? Where is that experience? I think I think the experience that we have as native people in this land is coming through now. Mm -hmm rather than the experimentation of democracy and theology and all the ologies that we can. So we can't be experimenting anymore with anything new because apparently it's not fitting. It's mm -hmm. the experience with the land that will come through. And I think that's the reference points that uh, we should not dismiss so easily. Mm -hmm. And the conversations with Native people should be longer, 
longer before, you know, where's the knowledge before 1492? Mm -hmm. Where's the knowledge before 1620 or 1776? Mm -hmm. You know, where's the knowledge and, and not just the wisdom, but the experience, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. information and knowledge and wisdom, but where's the experience? You know, so I think that's what I'm saying. And mm -hmm. how, do we, how do we bring that kind of thinking and knowledge to the people that are suffering? I, I mean, because, okay, there's a, there's a way that the consciousness that is currently the oppressor right now is strong. Um, there is a woundedness that it is, and so therefore it has to create out of that woundedness, so it creates more woundedness, including our systems of medical, the therapeutic and so forth can be actually kind of more labeling and taking us even more in a direction of, of more illness. Hmm. We're getting sicker and sicker. Mm -hmm. How do we bring the wisdom through in another way? How does that wisdom start to infiltrate the woundedness at a level that we can all help it come through? What are things that can be done? One thing that, to be sure, a lot of elders saying um, that this country doesn't know how to grieve. Because mm -hmm. grieving is a humbleness, and not just a humility like people think it is, a humbleness, and to be vulnerable is a most intelligent place to be, because it's all in front of you, and you have all the medicine of earth to heal from, that we can't own that tincture, we can't own that mushroom. But look how much we are told that that's the way all people are, when I know that's not how all humans think, that we don't have to own control because, because in the accumulation of, of information and knowledge is always changing, but it's the wisdom that technology doesn't have, science doesn't have, government doesn't have, religion doesn't have, there's no wisdom in it. But there, where's the experience with one place, the energy, the, the microtones, that medicine? That's available. But can we understand it with this language? So I get your point. Can right. we understand it with this language and how do we do that? Mm -hmm. He's like, okay, maybe just understanding that there is another way to think is, 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 could be a start. But I say, no, there is a way that exists um, right. that hasn't to do with being inferior or superior because many people think well the indigenous ways are a better way to think and be and live we can say that and i can go along with it and get into all the the, the cause and effect problems that that usually is the main problem but in the metaphorical world there is no cause and effect the meta metaphysical the met yeah there's no need for cause and effect because it all just is yes. and we forgot the language of is and we always get into to be something other than we are. Mm -hmm. So that sort of conjunctive verb, to be something that other than we are, we are to be or to be not to be, right? But to be something other than the, uh, are, what we already are doesn't, it's like we, we need to grieve. We don't know how to grieve. We don't know how to, we, we sit down at Thanksgiving table and all we're doing is giving thanks and forgetting about the truer history. Mm -hmm that maybe we need to grieve that, maybe that's mm -hmm. the remedy of healing, right? To heal, not just some temporary acknowledgement. It also right. seems like the experience of grieving, at least the way that we understand it in our culture, is, um, is a portal to a heart language, mm -hmm. to a heart thinking. Yeah. The nasula, right? The, the brain, the sensor, the eyes and nose, ears, <laughs> the mouth, the tongue, uh, all these sensors up here, right, are merely the nasula. They, um, they are as a seed. This head, this brain, is a seed of the heart. Mm -hmm. So everything emulates from here, and the heart doesn't lie. The heart doesn't catch con cancer, as far as I know. The only organ in the body. So maybe that's true with that tree, that chante, that tree, that cha, right? That that tree doesn't lie. The tree of consciousness. Mm -hmm. So our tree of consciousness is the heart, not just the brain, rationality to, to either lie or not to control mm -hmm. because we lack intelligence, knowledge, or even experience. So we make mm -hmm. things up. And so we understand as indigenous peoples, this is, this is all a make-believe. 
It didn't start off right with the, with the papal bulls, with the people, you know, saying yeah. like there were no humans over here. And this is our reason why we can bring our God and take care and take over. Mm -hmm. Maybe we have to go back there and understand that truth and tell it to our children instead of, you know, because it's easier to lie in America to our children than to tell them the truth. We beat around the bush rather right. than going right to it. And that, I think, that festers after a while and comes out like I can say what's going on currently, but, but it's always been here. Nothing has really changed. It comes out in, in sicknesses. It comes right. out in politics. It keeps coming out. Yeah. But we haven't... Uh, the medicine to deal with it. Well, it seems like when we move from uh, when we move to gratitude and appreciation, bypassing the grieving, mm. that we we can never really get there, mm. right? It's a way of circumventing ha actually having to deal with what it is that we've created and that sense of separation and longing even. Mm. Well, maybe we mm. should do a thanks grieving then day, mm. and because I remember even going when I was in Standing Rock. You know, and I, I sort of consider myself to be someone who is somewhat like um, connected to the trauma that different cultures have gone through. And But being out there, it was a whole nother level for mm. me yeah. of the understanding. And there was a lot of the grief that I was experiencing from the what's happening to the indigenous in our fight for Mother Earth out there and also for the, the war vets. Mm -hmm who believed in a country that was just and freedom and so forth and mm -hmm. who kind of went through a very difficult disillusion and wondering what they are actually mm -hmm. fighting for. Mm -hmm. So there is so much, and it's almost like to integrate the amount of grief that we need to go through um, is enormous. And some of our younger generation, especially from the white culture, might, or are in, I've heard the conversation like, but I didn't do any of this. Yeah. Mm. I totally, that's kind of a bypass. It's a convenient flashcard. And, and, and where is the language that it's part of the denial? So um, we don't look at the benefits of what ancestors did to my people or even to the land. And we're more concerned about what they did to the land that won't give those children a future that you talk about. Mm -hmm. I didn't do anything, I wasn't there, my grandfather. I can say that, and I use this whole <laughs> sort of anecdote that, um, that you know, in 1776 they signed the con U.S. Constitution. And you still live by that? Do you still vote? Do you still pay taxes? Do you still, you know, carry on democracy? I can say, well, I wasn't there in 1776. I don't have to follow that constitution. Mm. I don't have to pay taxes. I didn't sign it. You know, so that's the thinking. It's mm. the thinking. So where does that thinking stem from is, is the original, you know, I'm not doing any wrong because God told us that we're doing the right thing here. It's promised land. So when I think about, okay, how does one grieve all of those things? Maybe we can keep uncovering what's wrong all the time, but we you have to stop covering it up with, with bypassing, you know, excuses for, well, I'm going to come together, we just keep doing the same thing. So automatically that says to my Western mind, well, what do you suggest? Give us a, so we can do something instructive, <laughs> right? <laughs> How to. So it's not that what I'm trying to say is like, take your experience of, of just reminding yourself with owning yourself, of being in yourself. is like, what belongs to Native people here? If I mm. use that way of thinking, everything. Mm. It all belongs to us. But are we willing to share? No, it's not. we're not willing to share because it hasn't been asked of us. Mm. But we gave anyway. When we still gave, we still give, right? And because it's not ours, it's the, the source that we are still giving because we, we will, it's the American warehouse that has a resource and they'll run out so, so much because it's been taken. Mm -hmm. you know. So I think supporting these ideas which are not new to Native people, I think being able to be with Native people as I am. Uh, I gave a talk recently and someone said, well, you're the only Native here. There's so many little of you Natives left. And um, 
and said, oh, well, you, you see that numerically, but you are surrounded by, by us. <laughs> and they were sitting there looking like, what do you mean? I said, well, think about the trees and the birds and all the indigenous things here in this country. Mm. You're surrounded by us. So that kind of put things differently, turn things around. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's easy just to flip something like peace on earth rather than peace with earth. Mm -hmm. No, let's have peace with earth rather than peace on earth. Let's think differently. Well, that's not the whole story, yeah. right? Yeah. So it gives our, uh, the children another way to think. And so we, we, can, we can understand not just knowledge by the education of the Western Hemisphere or the Western mind is, is that what happened what is going on currently with Native people that says that when I take two old professors to, to Standing Rock and they have all the knowledge and experience of educating scads of people, young ones, all their lives, and then they come to Standing Rock and they can't think. They don't know how to think. There's no, nothing that understands this energy. Mm -hmm. right. They're appalled by it. They're like, What's going on here? Right. And so that's what I mean. That's the point that this country has to come from, instead of trying to think their way out of yeah. it, is understand that there's already another way to think yourself into yeah. it, which is, comes mm -hmm. from the earth, which yeah. comes from what you felt, that consciousness there at Standing Rock, which mm -hmm. I've, I've always known right. it's been there. I felt it all the time. Mm -hmm. And always not just to defend or attack anybody, but are we all protecting the earth? Because that's yeah. our first instruction. There was a, one of the beautiful things we experienced there was a, a prayer circle uh, that was not praying just for the community or for the earth, but it included in that all of the military and the police on the hill. Mm -hmm. You know, it included all of the brothers and sisters and all of the suffering yeah. from, that, from the separation. Mm -hmm. That's the grief. That's the, the grief. grief. So maybe yeah. the native people that I know were always talking about we need to grieve what we've done to the earth. Maybe we need to apologize to the earth, mm. right? Not just to the native people, but mm. but there we've taken away their ability to have freedom within the constitution to take care of the earth because yeah. they're 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 appreciating that the care. Um, I think we we have to understand that. Um, we were put in, the, in a box called a reservation. Mm -hmm. And because there's not room enough for Native people in America. But our thinking as Native people is to always include all relationship. So our thinking, mm -hmm. our base, who we are, is bigger than America. Mm -hmm. So America is, is getting smaller and smaller. And I think it's part of the arrogance of America is to get rid of them I mean, excuse me, is to get over themselves that we have the answer as Americans, even the citizenry, we don't have the answer. And that earth is always providing that answer as indigenous peoples have always kind of pointed us in that direction, mm -hmm. right? That this is, um, there's another way to live here. Right. There's another way to live here. Right. And that, that's going to happen. So either we, we, we get to it Mm -hmm. But we just continue to sustain the same old... Um... Well, and I think that's what's so important. It goes back to that, that question. You know, um, for many people, when they're born into a certain narrative, that's the only one that they know. Mm. So the question is whether they're choosing it or not. Mm. And in one way, they're not choosing it because mm -hmm. they were born right into it. Mm -hmm. But so the idea is like, how do we show that there is another way? Mm -hmm. How do we create that bridge from their consciousness into a different consciousness? Yeah. And what's the road for And an that? understanding that there is a constant choice. Well, and also a compassion for mm -hmm. it. The, the compassion to be born in such a limited consciousness right. that mm -hmm. allows them to be so hateful, so fearful, so um, Or even just to think that's all there is. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that is a dilemma. I think part of... Um, Understanding it is, um, um, what am I saying here? The, the whole eldership is when my experience with 
the people who were much older than I was in the, in, in the 60s and the 70s, and they were born in the 1800s, is that they always referred to their elders, not just humans, but they were referring to the rock, or the stone, or the fire, or all the elements that had been here all long before us, because they knew that we live in those uh, they live, those intelligences, those four elemental consciousnesses, intelligences, live within us. But individually, we cannot live in water or fire or in stone. So they always referred to the eldership. And that's pretty easy if I say it in this language. Is maybe we could stop thinking that they don't have consciousness, that those elders that we speak of indeed have consciousness and intelligence because they live within us. And how do they mm. do that? Let's figure that out non-scientifically. Mm -hmm and understand that the languages that, that are still remaining here contain the quantum physics consciousness to, to understand or to communicate with those elders. Mm. Because in America, we refer, refer to elders as human. Mm. And where are they? Where, where, where do we put elders? You know, there's, you know, and then they're looking for themselves. When they get older, they're like, who was I? You know, so maybe it's, it's that another way to understand that I think we all had at one time, mm. you know, all, all of us as humans, we had this way at mm. one time. Yeah. But it's not to say that we can get it back right away. We have to have a, 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 a long relationship with being able to understand the medicine to get that back, so to speak. Mm. Mm -hmm. Even that, to ask if it can be given back. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That, that sort of ties into a question that Cornelia has. Um, and she, she's saying that, some spiritual teachers say that there's a level of our multidimensional being in which there's a knowing that nothing's gone wrong. So a sense that, that this is as it's planned, I, I suppose. And she wants to know, from Lakota perspective, has something gone wrong and, and where is that? Um, I don't think I understand the question quite. I think what she's getting at is, is, uh, is with her not being here, it's hard to, to be specific, but I think that what she's getting at is this idea that, you know, everything is as it's supposed to be. But, um, but this, uh, this other innate sense that, there is, that there's a place in which we've split from that. And she's wondering, like, what, what is, is your perspective on where that split occurred? And is there a healing of it? <clears throat> I think that's a, that's a broad question and also yeah. one that's commonly asked by Westerners. Mm, Where did we lose it? Where did we split? Right. You know, but if you read the books again, you see that many, um, everything from Thomas Merton to, um, mm -hmm. you know, even Carl Jung are talking about, even some commissioners, U.S. Indian Affairs commissioners talk about that the Native people still have, but we don't anymore because we, we are failing to understand the language that they have. Maybe it's understanding the language, language they have rather than the concepts we apply to what they understand. Mm -hmm. um, and part of that is understanding that, okay, what are we putting first? Is it our supply of food in, in, in our refrigerator or is it her supply? Mm -hmm. Right? It's all her providing. Yeah. And we can say mm -hmm. that, but do we live that? Are we living that? that intelligence out that she's providing, and we always must remain as appreciation. Mm -hmm. So I think if we lost, um, there, there's many things that we could say, but that history is not mine. Mm -hmm. That history somewhere started over there and 4,000 years ago when they treated the earth as if it was property and, mm -hmm. you know. Um, it's that essential shift that you talked about. You said it earlier today, but also the other day when we were talking, that uh, this notion of, you know, I grew my garden and that shift of you know, the garden grows us. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's not only the garden, it's everything that we experience. You know, we think we're building yeah. all of these things and yet those are the things that are building us. Yeah. You know, Steve, I frequently talk to Western people and it's that hard for them to hear what's wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's hard for them to, to, to understand why I didn't do anything wrong, type of thing. Mm -hmm. So, what is the energy opposite of that? Mm -hmm. It's it's going in deep and understanding that, and that's the healing factor. That's a grief we grief. talk about. Yeah, yeah. So when it started over there four thousand years ago, there were <laughs> on that hill 
you know, to understand that the earth was, she lived a goddess, in this term, lived within the earth, and she balanced the earth with the waters and the fires mm -hmm. and the earthquakes in what grew, mm. right? And to understand that these uh, indigenous peoples were the closest consciousness to her, and they could not be civilized because they knew the truth. Mm -hmm. But that those who lost the connection and, and got rid of the people who understand the wis who understood the, the wisdom, even in their own civilization, um, um, they had to sever that in order to understand what property was. So if, if you can hang with me here is what I'm trying to mm -hmm. say, is um, once we, they arrived at a, at a place that they knew that they could make other humans property, women property, that they could create a hierarchy with reason and rationality, mm -hmm. is that they could not civilize indigenous peoples. So they called us tribes, mm -hmm. the three indigenous peoples of that time, Greek, Roman, they called them tribes. They could not be civilized. And I think that's the heart of who we all are, is that we don't have to go pagan, because that's a Christian term. Mm. We don't have to be heretic, because we don't have to choose this or the other. Is that we just have to understand that the language we use, we're not using it properly. So therefore, our energy is not being used properly. Mm. So again, it's the language thing, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I think that's, that's where if we are able to not go back in history or go forward in history, mm -hmm. but a, to achieve a Kantu, to be the ancient being, to the being from the ancient future now. And this is way before anybody said, be here now. This is our language. Mm -hmm. This is 100,000, 200,000 years old. And it's been honed such that it understands quantum physics. and. We're not going to go there because it's not a mathematical thing on the board, mm -hmm. but it's in the language, mm -hmm. you see? Mm -hmm. And I think that's part of understanding that because it's not a science field. It's one of feeling that, that energy, to right. knowing the energy and being right. able to, again, know what the energy is and to understand the motion of the energy. I just feel like mm -hmm. it's so much easier to teach this kind of thing with young children and uh, I, you know, do, I mean, and keep them connected. And I know that, you know, one of the tools that was used with the Native Americans is take the children from mm -hmm. yeah. that culture. Yeah. Um, and I don't know how many people even know about this, but... Yeah, that, the boarding school effect, right? And to... Um, ban our religion, our, our, our songs, our culture, our language until 1978. And I remember this when I was a kid, right? That, yeah, that why couldn't we be who we are? And to put us in a place where they would say, you can't be native anymore. So your history is wiped out. And you can't be native in the future. So that future is wiped out. We have to be mm -hmm. American, but they forget. They placed us just in the right place <laughs> to be here now. Mm -hmm. That's what we are. And mm -hmm. if we understand that, um, courage, even courage to understand that is, is the knowledge that we need to carry forward because I think people don't know who they are. That's why they're all constantly searching for themselves. But where does a person go with the vision? We call it dream. We call it, you know, opportunity in the United States if you get the right education. But then if you get the right education, we're not allowed as people of culture to go forward in the society, it's, it's all an illusion mm -hmm. to us, Right. Uh, for me actually, my, my experience. So, so when, when I go back to, okay, the, the children were, were taken away, um, but it's even more so to, to live a being taken away in a constant programming of education of the Western Hemisphere. The children don't even need to be in boarding school. In, in the United States, America. They're being taken away anyway. Their, their energy, the their, their spirit mm -hmm. being, the wisdom is being educated out of themselves. Mm -hmm. So I think that's part of it is that, that we as indigenous peoples have the least experience of being an American of all the peoples. So we may not ever get it, and maybe that's a good thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah.
You talk about uh, taking the children away and also you know, making things like potlatch yeah. illegal. Yeah. So you talk about gratitude and processes yeah. of connection and of gratitude and, yeah. and all of that. And to, to take that and to um, make it illegal for the culture to express that. Ceremony. Can you when, talk about, because I mean, I don't know that everybody knows what potlatch is, so. Oh yeah, potlatch I think is a Northwest way of, of uh, a giveaway mm -hmm. ceremonies. But you think about how, um, when I traveled throughout the world and through, especially through Europe, they would always ask and say, we forgot ceremony, we don't have mm. ceremony. And they describe ritual as being ceremony, but that's not ceremony. Mm. That's just something that's instructive. Right, and after a while, it becomes less of any kind of ceremony because you're just mechanically following an instruction. This is what you do, and this is when you end it. Uh, so it becomes more of a service rather than understanding that sacred places make you, and you don't make sacred places. Mm. You see, and so these sacred places are in nature; they're already there for us to acknowledge, and that's maybe that's what we've forgotten. And that's why we do what we do to the land, is we forgot what sacred place is even within us. Mm -hmm. So we forget to honor right. that. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you have another question, Steve, that, that came through? Or? Um, there's a question that, that uh, somebody from Colorado had, uh, Hillary from Colorado, but um, I think I'd like to ask it uh, in just a minute. We have another one behind you. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, I've got a couple more here. They just magically appear. Um, Felice from Accord says, um, can you speak to the concept, and it's, it's a, obviously a Western concept, of good and evil. She understands the concept's been used to, um, to separate and to oppress. But does denial of this notion of good and evil cause confusion and actually perpetuate it? Hmm. So she wants to know what your worldview is on good and evil. Oh, wow, that's a very binary mm -hmm. process. It's extreme, it's never, it doesn't deal with the mystery at all. So in this good and evil, in this concept of binary is that you will never accept mystery, that you will always try to, to solve it. And eventually that will make one go crazy because we're always trying to solve the mystery mm -hmm. but you can never solve the mystery and so it to be accept non-passively to accept that mystery is what we all are rather than kind of dream state of, of whatever dreamy we're getting into that mystery exists it's the action it's it's always here we swim in it we breathe it we live it it's in relationship it's midakue oyasi so it's understanding language differently. And I know that the 65% of this English language is Latin-based. It's a language mm -hmm. of domination, control, and destruction, mm -hmm. and binary thinking. And the binary actually supports that, because yes. that's, that's the ultimate separation. Yeah, yeah. That's the and us and them. It's either this and that, us and them. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think yeah. it's also the mystery. The importance about the mystery, I think, is, is that is to question if you thinking of something as evil is to go into the mystery of what created that energy of evilness so that you're still it's not a concrete evil but mm -hmm. it's actually still the flow of what creates the energy that's behind a movement that you're considering mm -hmm. of evil i mean it's, it's still going back to the mystery it, it's a it's a like a default people go to it right away like a superstition doesn't exist in native languages, mm -hmm. or supernatural doesn't exist. It is what it is. It's a hechetuelo. It's, it's it is what it is, and so it is. Yeah. And so it's it's us thinking, evil is an energy, or good is an energy, which is kind of true, but yet what happens when they come together? A certain balance, mm. and the being in the mystery. Yeah. Right. So that's that's hechetu. That that's is what it is and we, we can not just think of things in binary consciousness but that it's everywhere so one of the ancestors of Lakota said that, that um, the, the, the center of the universe is everywhere mm. so what does that do to the, the language we're using you know right, the center right. of the universe is everywhere right. yeah well, one of the things that I, I was struck as you, you were speaking and Marcin was talking 
was that, um, you know, originally we were going to do this with the whole community coming together and, and we were constrained from doing that because of regulations around COVID and, and all of those things. And so like many things in our life these days, it moved to a, to a virtual thing. And so we have people who have joined us, actually from all over the country, people who have joined us. And I just had this image of, as the three of us are sitting here talking and we have a crew here, that uh, everybody who's in this virtual space is is with us in this is is with us in this conversation is with us in this room and then i thought well it's also um, everybody who because somebody asked whether this will be recorded and it is being recorded and it will be available for people to see so then i imagined all of those people who will encounter this um, as it's you know shared and then i was thinking about the trees out there and 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 all of the natural world that we bring into this and our elders and those people who came before us and those people who come after. And there's one thing that's so beautiful, if you will, about this environment is the COVID thing is, has, has had a little shift in consciousness because mm-hmm. we're more aware of the people who are in their own experiences of life but are connecting. Uh, yeah. Um, wow. It's, it's interesting how you lose thought. Mm. Like, I'm going to say this, right? Mm. And it, it just leaves. Yeah. Right? So what what is what is that that space of, of silence and mm-hmm. emptiness with one? Because because this brain was trying to dominate mm-hmm. what I need to respond to that. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's a silence and, and that's mm-hmm. what is a proper response. Because mm-hmm. we don't in this society don't give silence its its mm-hmm. merit, basically. Mm-hmm. That that's the um the uh, we go off uh, um uh, Inila Wakan, the, the holy silence mm-hmm. that's missing between languages. Mm-hmm. And once we're into the languages, we understand that, wow, these old people in Lakota, they are, there's the great pauses between what they say because they're feeling the energy. Yeah. Not the concept. So there's great pauses. Mm-hmm. And people are impatient for indigenous peoples. We've got to get things done because we're going to lose the earth. We better save the earth. Right? When we get into that mentality, like, oh, we're all in a hurry, we got the time's running out and all this, and it's because of our dominant thinking. We have to change things because yeah. we're supposed to. Also, that sense of the response is to language. Yeah. And what you're saying is the response to the energetic. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's, we're, we're programmed to respond that way, yes or no. Yeah. There's no if. You know, we can say maybe, but that's it's considered a doubt within one's. Uh, ego mm. uh, maybe and so we're always going back on ourselves and having to go back to the drawing board so to speak mm. when it, it's already been it's not a plan of earth it's not mm. an agenda of the earth mm. but we recognize ourselves in the continuum of it that we know life doesn't end yeah. so yeah it's just uh, mm. i don't know if that, that was the question well, you or, know what it's it, it, what brought up for me though is it's like people are saying you know what can i do what can i do and what I'm hearing too, what we always talk about as well, is it's the beingness. Mm. It's what can I be? What mm. can I bring? And my and who I am. Mm-hmm. And yeah, the the completeness. I'm not complete without finishing the thought. Without. Mm-hmm. Completing the thought, as I mentioned earlier, the garden grew me instead of me growing yeah. that. Is that possible in this language? Of course it is, because I could come up with that thought. But what do you do with that thought? Do you just, oh, that's very nice, we'll put that on shelf. But can we even do that? Yeah. Like yeah. in the morning, we get up and we don't even realize we're having a ceremony with water. And you know, we flush it, we drink it, we cook with it, we don't have the ceremony, it's not here. Mm-hmm. But in my secret way of understanding it, like, oh, I'm not in boarding school, I can actually do this now. But I don't have to do it in ceremony to think that I'm a medicine person and show everybody with smoke and feathers and mirrors and rattles and everything. No, it's your intimate relationship with the consciousness of water. Right. Mm-hmm. That's what it's looking for. That's yeah. the, the, the secret, so to speak, is that you have be forgotten the intimate relationship with those elemental elders, consciousnesses. Right. Intelligences. Yeah. 
Yeah, beautiful. beautiful. I want to I want to thank uh, the holistic health community and HUD-C TV, amazing group of people uh, who we really love and are doing really beautiful work. Um, you know, and I want to say to that because HUD-C TV is an example. Uh, you know, we have a choice of what media, and mm, we do. We what are dominated we by many of our lives are dominated by media. Mm. And we have choices. The media is created according to what we watch and mm-hmm. what we support. And Hudson is a great example of mm-hmm. media that's being made that is of a kind of consciousness that's, mm-hmm. that's giving a different mm-hmm. voice and looking at things in a different way. Yeah. So I think it's one of the beautiful things is to look at the media that you're supporting in this process. Yeah, and uh, you know, I, I was thinking, well, my rational thought went to, um, how do we conclude something? And then I realized that there is no conclusion. Yeah. And that this is a conversation that continues. Always. That, yeah. That's how it feels with the friends I have here. It's like, yeah. when I met them, it's like, wait a minute, we haven't finished a conversation. So we never said hi. We just continued yeah. need the conversation, right? But I think part of that uh, understanding is that if there's more people that disagree with what I said, then I've done my job. <laughs> Because that yeah. stirs it. I don't yeah. want people who agree with me. And yeah. then, yeah, I, well, we know this already. Yes, yes. It's, I want people to disagree with me. Mm. And not say I'm wrong or right. It's just another way of thinking and being. Mm-hmm. That's, all it, that's all it really is. Mm-hmm. You know? So, yeah. Well, I, th- I think that um, this has been extraordinary to sit here with you mm. and to have these conversations. I know the conversation will continue. Yeah. And... And there was a, a, a question that, that um, somebody had online, um, which may be a nice place to take pause till we come back to this conversation again. And that is to, to ask you, you know, before we went live today, um, we took a moment just to be grounded and, and you set an intention and you did that in, in your native language. Yeah. Um, and what we could feel was the energy behind that. We didn't need to understand the words. Mm-hmm. And I'm wondering whether, uh, and it was asked, whether you could share something of the way in which you understood the world as a, as a young child and to share that in your native language. Um, and uh, um, and maybe to, to, to leave that as a way to... to to pause this conversation for now and to pick it up another time. Mm. Well, we have no word for goodbye in our language. Yeah. We only say, um, some people say, well, which means basically, from my point of view, it's, uh, I'll see you again in the circle of life. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much.